Hey everyone, I am Megan Phillips and I'm going to share my response for the two chapters that we read in the Darling Hammond text. Kind of sick right now. Hopefully I can make this through without coughing or sneezing. I apologize in advance if I don't. So what did I think of her argument? I thought she presented a great argument. I think that it is one that's not only important, but incredibly urgent. I thought that it was well-researched. She shared all of her knowledge with us. And the biggest thing that I appreciated when someone presents an argument, they also presented solutions. Um, that was just in two chapters. I enjoyed this book so much that I actually ordered it off of Amazon so I didn't finish it. Connecting her argument with my own experiences in education, it perfectly matched my experiences. Um, I grew up in the public school system in high school, I went to a Catholic school. Um, I had field, I have field experience in inner city public schools in New York and North Carolina. I student taught at Wrightsville Beach Elementary, and then I taught at a private inquiry-based school here in Wilmington, um, the Friends School of Wilmington, which is a very small school. And then I taught elementary school in rural Duplin County. So very diverse experiences in education, and her argument was spot on. Um, kind of on a side note, she mentioned um, tracking the students a lot. That was hard to read. Um, I mean, it's great to be learning new information and to see what it, you know, the effect that it will have on our students. It was especially hard because in my last school, that's how they would make the classes, um, you know, basically based on their reading score. Um, we would ability group them, you know, based on that, their language. So it was interesting information within, you know, the school tracking and the cross school segregation. Be you know, in the way that she said it, like basically they're not going to learn anything from each other. Um, it was hard to read knowing that I participated in that. But now I know. Um, and again, I appreciated the research that she provided with that. Um, she mentioned small schools, small learning communities, and the positive impact that they have. Completely true in my experience as well. Um, where do I think we should focus our energies in order to improve U.S. education? Well, I think it's an overwhelming task and that there's a lot that needs to be improved. But again, I appreciated that this text was not overwhelming. She provided solutions that were really doable and I agreed with those solutions. Um, one, a, a few things extra though, kind of the hearts and minds of the teachers and the public as we kind of think about the changes that we need to make in education because they are very different from school when we were there and even the way that we are trained as teachers. Um, and in the, the text, she provided really great information about the impacts of teachers, or, or she gave us great information about the impact that teachers have on student achievement. Um, that blew my mind. I knew what we did was important, but I didn't know that we had the biggest impact on student learning. Um, so learning that, I mean, I think way more needs to be going into teacher education, teacher support, thinking about the changes that as educators we need to be doing to make school a better place for everyone. We also need to increase teacher pay, you know, it needs to be desirable. Um, we want highly qualified, highly educated people in this field. Um, she also mentioned early learning. And I agree that this needs to be a priority um, and thinking about how important that is. Uh, some things that she didn't mention that I would like to see um, change happen in this. I think bilingual education starting at the elementary level and smaller schools. I've seen the effect of that. Um, and I think that absolutely needs to happen for teachers and for students. I think it would absolutely make it a better place. Also kind of thinking how we view language um, and our students who speak, you know, two or three languages, making sure that we are fostering that. And that is 
so incredible that they are able to do that. You know, it's not a language barrier. And really thinking about how, as teachers, we view that and fostering that, you know, offering advanced language courses. <laughs> not something that's offered currently. Uh, the extension to our argument critiques areas of concern. Well, and again, this was only, we only read two chapters. She didn't touch curriculum. That's huge. Um, testing also wasn't mentioned. Um, I think that these are <laughs> two really big things that need to change in U.S. education. Um, maybe they're mentioned in later chapters. <sighs> With everything that she's mentioning that needs to be changed, though, I mean, it can't be done with our... It's just not possible with our current testing environment. Um, so when we're thinking about adding languages and advanced languages and changing the way the teachers are teaching, like we, it can be done with the pressures that are going along with testing. Um, but again, like I said, I ordered this book, really enjoyed it, and I can't wait to hear what everyone else thinks too.